be too. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 57. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building today. Introduce yourself to the audience, ladies. Hi, I'm Tony B. I'm Jim Bunny. And I'm B. And we are the Group Chat, Chat Live. Chat Hi, guys. Hi. Shouts out to the Group Chat Live. Ladies, let them know where y'all coming in from. International hype is not just a hashtag. It's a way of life. Oh, my. We are the Group Chat Live, hailing outside. We are hailing from Houston, Texas. Yes. Give me y'all some of that Southern love. We are the Group Chat Live out of Houston, south side of Houston. Better yet. Shouts out to Houston. I got a lot of love out of, out of Dallas. So you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Houston. It's my first Houston situation, but a whole lot of Dallas on the podcast. Yeah, shout All out right. to Dallas. Shout out to Dallas. My That's friend. where she's from. Yes. Oak Cliff. She's a Houston transplant. Oak where, Cliff, where? shit. Then hold yeah. up, man. I got some niggas down in Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. <laughs> Oak Cliff. Born and raised, but. Honorary Houstonian. Shouts out to my niggas from Old Cliff. I know you locked in and listening. No names necessary. All right, let me get the rundown now. Custom Hustle. Custom Hustle is my clothing line. We do custom baseball jerseys, custom jackets. You got the sweatsuits and then the t-shirts. Follow that on Instagram at Custom Hustle World and on Twitter at Custom Hustle Co. My cleaning company is H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is on Instagram as a tri-state area situation. But if you make it work my while, I will slide up on you. Now the radio rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday in the E Block Radio Network at two o'clock. The GFT Radio Network two o'clock every Tuesday. Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com twelve thirty on Thursdays. Fridays the I Say Podcast Radio Network ten a.m. and so ah damn Saturday Saturday <laughs> THC Radio Network ten a.m. Uh, ladies, y'all ready? We're ready. You booked it easy. Hey y'all. <laughs> Hey, this is how you this is how you hustle is one of my hashtags. Everything is a hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. All right. All right, so here we go, ladies. Episode where we 57. Yeah. All right. How important are your man's needs? Now, the way that we're gonna do this is you can take that however you want. We're talking physical, emotional, uh, financial, uh, <laughs> however it is that you want to tackle that topic. How important are the needs of your man? How important do you make those needs? Nobody. We're gonna start. We gonna start with Jen because she was the first one that showed up for work. <laughs> Why would we start with me? She was the first one here. <laughs> Why would we start with me? You was um, the first one. You was on time, girl. Let's go now. How important are my man's needs? Are all my man's needs like all of them, or is a collective? Like we talk all my niggas or just one nigga? Like, how, how are we working with things? Whomever you have is number one on the roster. How important are his needs? Number how important one is, is it? He's being... What? Yeah, just, I now? think that was just in general, Jennifer. Not I don't think he's meaning, like, your specific nigga. Just, like, oh. if you had a man, how important are his needs to you? Okay. That's what we're rolling with. Okay. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Copy that. Thank All you, right. Babe. So... <laughs> Um, I feel like a lot of times women, as as we have men and stuff, we get left behind. So I have to be an advocate for myself, and I'm gonna say his needs come second because I have to put myself first at some point. And when it comes to physical, usually I'm the person that is physically on somebody. Like, come on, let's do it, let's do it today, let's do it, let's do it today. Like, let's do it right now, let's do it, let's do it wherever we at, let's do it. Like. So physically, if he ain't with that, which I have niggas that be like, calm down, like just later, tomorrow, blah, blah. So I don't know. I'm that I'm the nigga in the relationship. So I'm first in this He's situation. The nigga. <laughs> I'm the nigga in the relationship. So oh. I feel like my needs should come first. But uh his needs are just as important as mine or anybody else's. Like once we get down to the rundown, like you tell me what you need, I'm gonna tell you what I need, and we just gonna kind of puzzle that shit together and figure it out. See, this is how we got to the topic before I let y'all both answer. Was everybody always hit you with the happy wife, happy life situation? Nobody ever talks about how a happy husband or a happy spouse being a male 
can make a situation better. A everybody always puts happy the, song, yeah, happy every, everybody puts the emphasis on her being happy. Nobody puts the emphasis on him being happy. That's how we got it. Do you happy. know why? Go ahead, then you jumping in, B. Go ahead. Yeah, it's because usually men are doing something wrong. Like wow. women are not very very hard to manage if they are loved right and respected and all of that stuff like that. Yeah. So usually something is off and the man is the, the man is doing something off to make the woman unhappy because we're really easy creatures when you just think about it. You trying to go viral, fam? Um, because um, that is not that is not the truth. And hold up, hold up. Be didn't answer the question. We're not letting that skate out of there. How important are your man's needs? How important? They're very important. Um, I believe um, uh, treat someone how you want to be treated. So if I want my needs to be taken care of, then I need to do the same for him. So just in general, my man's needs are really, really important to the point where I kind of throw myself into his world. And I kind of forget about myself sometimes. And that has happened in the past where I become so consumed. So maybe I need to work on balancing. But I, at, at this point, I do think they are important. No one needs to be um, unhappy and unsatisfied in a relationship. Mm -hmm. At all. Totally. And that's not a relationship. That's some uneven yeah. shit. That's just a ship that y'all just rowing together. It's just a ship. When the shit mm -hmm. is unbalanced, it's just a ship. It's just I mean, a it's ship. a... It's a relationship. It's a dysfunctional relationship. All relationships are not good relationships. Um, first off, it is true. It is, is very true. true. Um, I don't believe in titles, and I'm not a fan of marriage. So we can start there. I do believe that the person that you are with, <laughs> um, that's that's cool. Like my sisters are married. I come from a family of marriage. My parents are married, but um, yeah, that's just not for me. I do think a man's needs are very important. The person that has um, my person. Um, we need to talk, Tony. That's another episode that I got coming down the pipe. We're going to talk about when we get done this episode. Oh, no. <laughs> I was raised with love and saw love around me. I just know what I do and do, don't nah, do. That's a whole other episode. We ain't there right now. We ain't okay. there. That's an off mic topic. Um, I do I believe you. that his needs are very important. I'm very much the woman that comes home from work and I cook dinner, I wash clothes, I clean up, I'm running errands, I'm taking care of what needs to be taken care of. But thus far, thus far, I'm also taken care of in another way. Um, I am not wowed by money and things. So buying me won't make me be a better person to you. Um, character is important. Um, I do believe if a man's mental is not good, how can he be any good to me? So if I need him to be good for me, he also needs me to good, be good for him. Um, men don't always be the ones that be doing wrong. It's a lot of trash ass women too. They be fucking these good men up. Preach, mm. sister. <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> time it's, it's that's true. There are a few, but I, I think that most of the time it's these niggas. These niggas is it, it, it's most of the time it's these niggas. <laughs> we have these conversations all the time, Tony. We do. We had these conversations. <laughs> yeah, like, you should not it be these niggas. Why? It's not. Right, so this yes, is, there this are is, some trash niggas. I just don't believe in a happy wife, happy life because I think it's a. Very, I don't believe in that either. It's very unfair to the man because it then says it's though um it sets the tone that. It, it kind of says the her needs are more important than yours. Yeah. I'm more important than you when we mm -hmm. go into a marriage to be equally yoked, but then you set this standard of, yeah, I want to be equally yoked in my vows and what we stand on, but if I'm feeling bad and he feeling bad, my feeling bad is more than his because I'm the woman. He, he a man, so he shouldn't feel that bad, but why can't he? Just the same token, you see couples that this man is hurt and he has emotions and the woman is kind of like, okay, well, let's move on. Well, she, he human. He got feelings. He hurt. He need that attention. But a lot of women are so stuck on this mindset that a man should just have this 
understanding of his emotions and then a woman can feel how she feels i just think it's so unfair i'm i'm rooter of for the men i root for the men i'm the one on the show that i feel for. like that, hold up hold I up Jen, like hold up that, hold up Jen, um, hold up Jennifer, that, um, that saying Jennifer, hey, he's talking. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Hold up, Jen. All right. This was a key word here in the question, y'all. Always pay attention to the words. How important are your man's needs? B talking about some niggas. We not talking about some fly by night. Ain't handling his responsibilities. Niggas no. equal men. Yeah. No, nah, it's a difference. There's a difference <laughs> no, here. No, it's not. It's a it's a I difference mean, when you deal. It's a difference. Man. Hold. On. It's a difference when you deal with a man and when you deal with a nigga. Two totally different situations. When you deal with a man, he puts a certain expectation there. He sets a certain standard for you to meet. When you're dealing with a nigga, he's the one that's playing with your emotions and he's fucking around your situation and he has things on a bad accord. There's now, a huge I guess, difference there. I didn't that's me. your opinion, but my opinion and I, the way that I see it is niggas equal men. I mean, that we use the term interchangeable. So it's not like Niggas is that I don't mean conver- I don't mean conversationally. What I'm talking about is if you meet a dude, if you meet a nigga who got his shit together, you ain't gonna call him. Oh yeah, that's the nigga that I fuck with. You yes, can call I him am. by his name. Yes, I am. You calling that nigga by his name because you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm getting. Oh no, 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 I'm saying nigga no. means man, boyfriend. That's why I said if we talk, oh, yeah, if we talking, a, if we talking conversationally, for absolutely. Me, for me, but for me, like for me, with the type of man that I like, the type of man that I date, part of taking care of him is keeping that privacy. So no, I'm not walking around talking about oh such and such I'm walk- that's my nigga I'm also part of taking care of my man is not displaying that all the time because what we have in our home is what we have in our home so me saying my nigga don't disrespect him don't discredit him or nothing I fucks with a lot of good nick no wait okay wait <laughs> take that back I've dated some good niggas. Um, not many, because I'm not their girl, but I've dated some good niggas. They are, they, you know, you can say it how you want to, but like she's saying, we use it interchangeably. It doesn't change the type of person it is. Because no, there's a true. lot of niggas that are better men than these so-called men. So we got to start there. See, all right. See, we, we, get I lost think it's just we get lost in the We get lost in the translation here with, we talking conversationally, yeah. That's my nigga. That's not a problem. I'm not saying like you demeaning him by saying that. But if you get with a man, maybe y'all, maybe we just haven't met this guy yet. Like maybe we haven't gotten there yet. But if you get with a man who, like you said, he makes you want to do all of these different things. Like B is more so saying like she's more of the giver in a situation. She said, I consume yeah, myself with all it is that he wants yeah, and what it is that he needs. So once you get with that type dude, though. Who makes anybody like it's the same shit for guys when they get with that type of girl who makes them go a little bit differently and makes them look at the situation differently that he's not going to treat her just like he is every other chick that he's been dealing with because this is a different situation they wait for go- a nigga like my gal <laughs> <laughs> right go ahead Jen you was trying you to say something Jen? it's my gal <laughs> but we suck oh, too that's another thing too where we're from that, that that's nothing. The yeah. That's another thing that holds the that that holds the perception because um I've met um we were on a show with some with a podcast from Philly and um they were mad the they were married and they were like married they didn't really go out but they did a lot of couples things and like where <laughs> we're from and in the age group that we're in um. The married people be out and about too. Like we are, like us single people and living that total life. So I think it's all in a matter of, I think the upbringing and then the, I guess the Southern part, cause it's kind of like, um, all of that don't matter. What go <laughs> on in them four walls do? That's I what I understand it's what he's trying it. to get at though. You're saying like a man is, you know, the person that's going to take care of home, do all this and a nigga is not. He's like playing games. That's what you're implying, right? That's exactly what it is, yeah. Okay. I understand that. But I I, I just think that those two people, those names are the same. But I, <laughs> I just think <laughs> I'm kind of like, But I understand what you're trying to say, though. 
So mm-hmm. here's my question is I'm talking before you were married and before you met your start courting your wife, the women before her was y'all little bitches, y'all little gal, y'all little yeah, y'all little y'all just, little just talking. They were his we friends. Just so we you just don't talking. You, okay, that, that Wait, was it's so good. So do you feel feel that anybody before your wife was just someone you talked to, you had never been, because somebody, I heard somebody say this on a podcast. They said they feel that the only person they ever dated was their husband. Everybody before that was just a friend. Even though they thought they had been in relationships until they met their spouse, then they knew they had been in a real relationship. See, I'm a different situation because I never had a girlfriend in my life. I would tell girls when I met them, I don't want a girl. I'm not looking for a girl. And that's not the role that you're going to fill. If that doesn't work for you, I completely understand it and we can move on from here. <laughs> like, if that really? does work for you, though, we can talk tomorrow, we can talk next week, and all of that could be cool. But as far as us being in a relationship, it ain't happening because that's not what I want. I don't want to tell Tony, you my one and only, and then I'm going to go crack on Jen. And then I'm going to slide and be DMs. I'm not going to do that to you. So why, for me, why? that's why I'm well, not tying myself in any of these situations. That's very honorable. Why? Mm-hmm. But how did you get relationship practice? Yeah. You know, because you be practice. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I look at it. But anyways, we're not, that's a whole other subject. I know you wanted to talk about men need, men's needs, Hold right? On. Jim Jim was trying to get in a couple minutes ago and say something. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm just completely shocked at the fact that you just go around telling us, well, this ain't gonna be the role that you go. But when I say that, people be like, why would you tell somebody that? I'm, I'm oh shocked my. too. I've heard it before. But but... Anyway. So um, I was saying that the saying um happy wife, happy life kind of to me comes from comes from when a wife comes home, she does all of these many things. So like she does all of these things, even if they don't have kids, she does all of that list of things. And that's why it's more of husbands that just come home and they want cooked meals. They want to make sure they clothes wash. They want all of those things. And all she's asking for is this happiness. Like, give me this one thing. Make sure I'm happy. On, and I'm going to take care of all your many things. See, happiness, that's though, but but happiness I can't, you I can't control them. your happiness because your happiness is internal. No, you can't like, control my joy. You can control my happiness. But then that leaves you the can't take my joy. But then that leaves the, that leaves the fact that if what what if one day when I stop doing that one thing that makes you happy, does that mean you're gonna stop loving me that one day if I can't do that one thing that makes you happy to make you stay? Jen, you wanna answer that or what the hell just <laughs> you go ahead, Jen. You know, like that that's why I can't get with the happy wife, happy life. You're thing. muted, Jen. Jen, you're muted. Uh oh, Jen's confused. Okay, um, hold up. Before I before I jump in here, this is my uh, whole situation. Is like I said, people always like discredit the man. Like Tony was going to this one answer is, yeah, as a man, you was brought up and told like that you've got to be so uh, about everything. <coughs> you have to have a certain amount of strength and all of that. But when you get with a woman and you decide that this is my woman and we're gonna grow, build, and go on, like. You have to be at least vulnerable with her. And if you being vulnerable with her might mean you might, some dudes is more emotional than others. And like, how important is it that your woman is going to make that? Is she going to cater her game? Or is she going to alter her game to what works for you? Or is she just going to go, you bitch ass nigga? Why the fuck is you always crying? Is it that you one of those dudes who he ain't never going to show no emotion no matter what the situation is? Do you still cater to that situation or do you go, you don't ever want to open up. You know what the fuck he was when you got with him. So like, how important is it that the things that he needs, how important do we, the women, I'm sorry, how important do y'all, should I say, make those different things or is it just like, I ain't happy so the whole fucking situation has to be torn down because if I ain't happy, nobody gets to be happy. No, no, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I ain't happy, nobody happy. Yeah, I'm oh, hard to please. Ladies. I'm hard Why to please. to please. I have had a wonderful childhood. I was loved. <laughs> I did not grow up on struggle. So I and as an adult, I am still loved by my parents and my family. So um people that don't like to really um 
go to the beat of my own drum. I don't like that. Now I'm not a person that just you have to do what I say. That's but what you just said. I'm about to be, but that's, that's what you just said. That's exactly, okay, that's exactly that's what you just said. Like, I don't get everything I want in my situation, but I also I'm not begging either. And I feel that um the happy wife, happy life shit y'all begging a nigga to do right by you. And if from day one he tell you that ain't what he gonna do, no matter how much you do, no matter how much you make him happy, he just not gonna be that nigga. And a lot of women think if they go in and please this aspect and show him everything that if the last woman before her didn't do, he automatically is indebted to her. No, that man is not indebted yeah, that's just to you. Dumb. He don't have to do for you the same way he wakes up and is entitled to his own happiness. You are entitled to your own happiness. His mental state is on him, though, because um, if you don't know how to communicate, I can't know when you're not feeling life. If you don't know how to talk, I can't know those things. So that's on the mental is on him. What's on me is how I interpret and how I adapt to his mental state. That's where I think we got to also talk about the difference, too. Because if somebody telling you something, um, how do you respond to it? Because I find a lot of women that's out there, I ain't going to never pay no bills. My husband got to do all of this. Also, don't be, with, um, don't be willing to address the man's mental state. And that's important, too. My man's mental is very important to me. Black men are so left behind when it comes to their mental because it's so focused on the strong Black woman, which is true. But a lot of men have been strong Black men, and they get left behind trying to live this picture-perfect life and make these young women who didn't have, 90% of them didn't have a daddy that gave them their life, so they're looking for a nigga to give them that. And they leaving all their burden on the man. And then y'all forget them niggas be human. They be sad. They need a hug. Some days they don't want to come home and hear us talk. Sometimes they, the niggas want to come home and you shut the fuck up. I already had a blunt roll, dinner cooks, and you go in your room. And he got to do what he needs to do. And that that could be meeting me meeting all of his needs. And if that's what we have to do, I'm going to be mad, but I'm going to do it. Copy that. Read the room and understand what it is that you, who it is that you have as your partner. And understand yeah. that just because you did it the other way with the other nigga don't mean that you could do it that way with me. Yeah, you know I mean? that's it's not a one shoe fits all type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the that's the type of thing that some people don't recognize. People don't understand that like just because it always worked for you this way because you dealt with this type of person. That's why I said you might have been dealing with these type of niggas who that shit worked for because that's all that they knew. Now you're dealing with a whole new breed of nigga and that ain't gonna work for him. He needs what he needs and you gotta meet those needs or you gotta get the fuck away from him. Jen, you had something to say? What happened to you over there? You good? Yeah, I don't know what happened to the phone. It just like went off and then came back on and went off and came back on. I don't um, know. My question for you as a man, especially as a man that hasn't done a lot of relationship dating, um, how did you know what you needed in a partner if you had never um, experienced having a partner? Um, if you hadn't experienced something, how do you know what your wants and needs were if you didn't know it, I guess? Yeah. So for me, for me, it's more so like a personality traits. Um, all my friends was always older than me. So when I'm 15, my friends is from 20 to 25 or 30. So when I'm 11, it's the same group of friends. When I was six, it's the same group of friends that I had all those years. So oh, okay. I can, pick and, I can pick and choose and get from the experiences of everybody else. I can look at the type of girl that, like, okay, for, use y'all as an example. All right, my man used to talk to Tony, and she did this, and I didn't like that. B did this, and I like that. So I can pull and say, okay, so when I get in that situation, I'm more so looking for this than that. So for me, like, I, I never wanted to have kids at first. Because when you young 20s, it's all about me, and that's what I'm looking to have it about. If I start getting too deep in with somebody, the condom mm -hmm. comes off, you start hitting raw, now she's pregnant. Now this shit is over. And oh, wow. your, whole situ your whole situation goes into now I got to gear all my attention, all my thoughts, and all my process towards this child. I wasn't looking to do that. 
That's why I always stated from the rip, look, this is what it is. This is how it's going to be. And if it don't work for you, I understand. I ain't going to call you out your name. I ain't going to talk about you. I might even still buy you this drink if I'm feeling good enough tonight. But I need to establish that with you from the beginning because I don't want you to then tell me about how you're confused as to what this situation was that you walked into. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Now, let's switch to show up now and let's talk about y'all. Group chat live. Obviously, the name was self-explanatory that y'all just brought the group chat to a live situation. <laughs> um, so how long? How long have y'all been doing the podcast? Um, we've been doing it for four years. Yeah, yeah. Four this years. Is point, yeah. Mm-hmm. We started originally with a group of five, and um, parted ways, and it's just been us three for the last. Three years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I started with a group of 10, so believe me, I understand. <laughs> a podcast with 10 people? A podcast with 10 people? Oh, my God. Listen, explain it to you off mic. 10 people, and yes, that was how the show ran. <laughs> that was how I ended up in Dallas one weekend. Uh, but we'll talk about that off mic. Okay. Um, all right, so this is what I wanted to know from y'all. Like I said, it was this one episode that I was listening to particularly. And I thought that y'all was all in the school district, all teachers type situation. And we were. Three of y'all, all three we of y'all are. was like, well, all yeah. three of y'all was like, I hate this shit. So, yeah. if you could walk away from the school district, I understand, like you said, it is that one little girl, that one little boy who you like and you're trying to get them right. Copy. But if you could make the decision to do what it is that you wanted to do, what would it be? Jim, we're going to start with you. Baby, I'll walk away today. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even go back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but because I am my mom um, and the school district that I, I work in, I'm able to move my son around into the schools that I want him in. Our schedules mm-hmm. match up. Um, we have summers, spring breaks, all the holidays. Everything matches up. It's one reason why I don't walk away. That's the main reason. So what you're saying is once he goes to college, you're out of there. (laughs) Maybe once he goes to high school, I'm out. Soon as they accept him. He said, what what would you rather be doing aside from teaching? Um, Of course, I would rather be a full-on sex confidence coach doing, like, not not shows, but doing um, um, seminars and doing having my own building where I kind of, I see clients on a everyday basis, constantly in and out. Like that's my main focus. That's my main goal, my main drive. Like that's what I want to be doing. That's, that's I want to be flying here and there, taking my bitches on trips and doing my, doing my sex confidence coach business. That's all I want to do. All right. One more before we switch it up from you. Are you doing anything to lead yourself into that situation? Definitely, definitely. Copy that. Yeah, she got all kinds of certifications and things. I have definitely, yeah, certified and all kinds of that. Definitely. Check out her name. Check out her name. Go ahead. B, we on to you now. Um, I've had so many things that I wanted to pursue. She is so talented. She is. She is so talented. I have so so many many things. Let me tell something. Let me say something. Go ahead, defend your girl. Before when B was in college, she <laughs> wanted to be a lawyer, she wanted to be an author, she wanted to be a writer. Then she decided out of the blue, she wanted to be a teacher, then she wanted to be a counselor, and then she <laughs> wanted to be an artist and like do balloon type. Oh, things. yeah. Uh, wedding, she, she's done weddings, she's been a wedding. Agency. Agency. She has a travel agency business. She had travel, so I was going have- She's a very creative person, and if she really could tap into her niche, she's a wonderful party coordinator. Like, they threw me at Fiesta last week from decorations to just being in theme. Her creativity is like outside of the box. I threw my. I also friends. want to be a photographer. Bitch. When yeah, have you I you? <laughs> All right, so hold up now, ladies. Uh, B, why have we been so indecisive? Like, oh, no. Then she turns the camera sideways on us. <laughs> why have we been so indecisive, B? Oh, no. 
I was trying it's to figure so that out earlier. So they just have a lot going on in their brain. I do have a lot going on in my brain. I don't really know. I don't know why I can't pick one thing and stick to it. Because I was thinking about that this week. Like, what did I need? Like, a something. Because I don't think education and me gonna going to get along for very much longer. So I need something that I could do that I could stick to like you remember I was going to start that cooking channel yeah and she was going to do a makeup artist she did my makeup last week and it, made me. it was just I don't know why I can't I can't stick to one thing it's probably because of my adult age ADD. <laughs> my brain is just going 100 miles per hour and that's just how it is and it really sucks because adult ADD is an actual thing. Shut the fuck up. Tony is not buying it. <laughs> and no, now we're going really to Tony. Has, no, she has it. Listen no, I it. really do. I'm they really do. They really, really do. I, I really do. It is yeah. very Tony. difficult. Be what would you be doing? <sighs> what would you be doing? If okay. You got out of- if I was not, well, I am who I want to be every day. I'm Tony B. The Stylist, Houston's um, hairstylist, your favorite hairstylist, hairstylist. Um, I make custom units. I am a licensed stylist. I'm not no play stylist. I am a licensed cosmetologist, a licensed cosmetology instructor. Um, I'm just great every day. That's what I am. I just make She's my inspiration. She's living her dream. Oh, I, I do that. I am very much a person that believe. Um, write it down at the first of the year, and it's that's what you want to do. That's what you gotta do, and you gotta live your dream. So, um, I am Tony B the hairstylist, but I'm also Tony with the T. So I give y'all facts on foodie things. So I love going to places and taking videos and giving reviews on stuff, like telling people the good and the bad. So that's what I do, and I just live life. And have drinks and have I just fun. want to be Tony's Barbie doll. I just want Tony did my hair. And he's yeah. it. Tony is my yeah. hair. That's I what I'm doing. I love podcasting. I love my friends. I love if I wasn't doing this, I would text them all day positive things. Cause that's all I do now is text them positive stuff all day. And I am the one that walked away from education. Um, probably about a week ago was my last day teaching. I will probably never go back. Um, I was in fourth grade. It wasn't worth my mental. I'm gonna tell you this. Um, when y'all hear them teachers on TikTok and y'all hear them teachers on the computer, it is real. It was not worth my mental. It was not dry. It was not. It was no longer worth driving to work crying, leaving work crying. It was no longer work. No, it, it wasn't working. And I choose me every day, every fucking day. I choose me, and that day I chose me. So this is how this is why I asked y'all about that. Uh, when I listened to the episode, I just quit my job. I've been working at that job for 13 years. And I said, all right, look, these people, we got a new company coming. These people are on some dumb shit. I'm cool. Can't do it. Um, so, excuse me, me listening to y'all at the time. And I'm like, all oh, y'all sound like y'all hate this shit. <laughs> like, and you got other things going on and other things that you could put it into, you know, if you can Tunnel vision, B. You know what I'm saying? Get the, get it from here. To, let's get two things going at least. Um, <laughs> see, that's why I, I do I get them though. going. I just don't follow through. You have to pay don't her follow, yeah. and beg her a lot, and she'll do them. She I don't, she I'm only like it so effortlessly, though. She does it so effortlessly. Like I told, I said, B, I need my makeup done tomorrow. All right, we'll do it. She got up. We fixed my makeup. And I'm like, oh my god, look at me, B. Like, look at me. And she has a very oh creative um, mind. I think she has a very creative mind, but I also think she's a perfectionist, and so she spends so much time in her mind processing how it can be great that she yeah. doesn't get to the process of actually doing it. Ooh, that's but a good point. I think Tony. that maybe yeah. um, I'm gonna try his thing. advice and have tunnel vision. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Focus on how great she is, and she hasn't tapped into her He's greatness. He's talking. Let me he give it to you. This is me. this is where I was going with the situation. This is why I lined y'all up. I got y'all. I'm paid talent. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I lined y'all up like that because, like I said, this is what I just did. 
I do they gave you a little bit of the rundown in the beginning. I got a clothing line, I got a cleaning company. We talked about y'all did a live show before. I did a live show a couple weeks ago. I do seminars. You talked, you just talked about you wanted to do seminars. I did a, how to hustle seminars. I did all of these things and I got myself now to a full-time hustler. It's one of my hashtags, it's full-time hustler, because that's what I'm doing right now. I was in a space in a situation where the job wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And before I let this mentally get on my fucking nerves, I can just walk away from y'all now. That is no longer a problem for me. So that's why I brought this up for y'all, because that's the exact same space that I was in, which is why I wanted to bring y'all on so that we could go there and talk about that. Uh, um, did you have a plan? Absolutely. I had insurance okay. lined up and all of that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's people don't I think had, about those little things. That's because people don't be the little I'm, big things. Big big picture thinkers. I, I always am. Before I do anything, I don't already thought about it, analyzed it, and broken down how we can make this work. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask y'all though, which one of y'all was on and talking about? I think it was Tony, but I ain't sure. I go to Target and I buy little things from Target, and they got the dollar that's aisle or something. That was that's Tony. Tony. Okay. What's the last thing you bought out of Target? <laughs> oh. Ooh. She probably went yesterday, knowing her. Yeah. No, I didn't, bitch. I'm going You're to a Target. You're a Target holic. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I love going on Sundays. I go on Sundays when my friend, my boo, is watching sports because I don't really watch sports. And normally, if you know, you know that that's the time when all the other people are in Target and they haven't, um, their husbands are doing the same thing. The last thing I bought from Target, oh, my kids, I went, um, before I left, I had a girls group in my school and I gave them a Galentine's party and I gave them gifts. And so I bought them all of these um, mind stimulators. If you have a child that can't focus, if you buy them things like this, um, tell them to connect each one, each one connected with a deep breath. As they take a deep breath, they inhale, take it out, and it gives them time to um, really attend to their emotions and learn how to control. Black kids don't know how to recover. These are things that can teach them how to recover. So that's the last thing I bought at Target. Copy that. Ladies, I appreciate y'all coming on. Shouts out to Houston, Texas. Let the folks know where they can follow y'all at before we let y'all go. Hey, y'all, we the group chat live heading out of Houston, Texas. You can find us on all your streaming platforms. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud. And you can also find us on YouTube, our latest episode, Weight Loss, um, our latest episode, Surgery. Y'all know y'all done had some, you know, a friend that's been had a BBL, has some lipo, 360, had a little breast augmentation. Check us out and you can see it on YouTube. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at group chat underscore live. We are... Y'all the group chat motherfucker. Also, yeah. we're on Audible now. Oh we're yeah, we Audible, Audible too, y'all. So for all y'all that like Audibles, first of all, go listen and then DM me and tell me tell me about this Audible thing. And make sure y'all check us out. We y'all favorites, favorites, favorites. Okay, I'm Tony B. Okay, I'm B Bunny, <laughs> and I'm B, and we are. The, the group, group chat, chat live. live. Thank you. Shouts, shouts out to the ladies from the group chat live. That was episode 56 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. We are out. Thank you. Oh, my lady. That was fun. <laughs>